Hello and welcome to the Decent Wrestling Show, episode number 7. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe and check out my latest MV which is on Tam Nakano on my channel. So in today's show we're going to look at two stardom shows, Monday Night Raw. Um, some matches were announced for Wrestle Princess. Um, I'm going to have some thoughts on that. Some NXT stuff, MSG Smackdown, a couple other notes and some questions that I got. Let's kick it off, let's go into Stardom and the show that happened on the 6th of September. There was 10 matches on this show uh, which happened at Currican Hall on the 6th of September for the 5 star Grand Prix which is continuing. Uh, unfortunately Julia is out of the tournament, uh, she had a last match on this show. Um, she will be out to the end of the month uh, taking care of some neck injuries, uh, a lingering neck injury. So hopefully um, she'll be healthy and back in October. So the first match was Micah taking on Mai Sakurai. And Micah basically dominated most of the match. But Mai did get a decent, she got an okay amount of offense in. But Micah pretty much destroyed her. Um... It was a fine match, two and three quarters. Um, Mai continues to improve and look a bit more confident in the ring, which is good to see. Momo and Fukugan, um, zero stars. I think it went about a minute. Just a pointless match. Just Well, not pointless, but just to give Momo a win. Then straight on to Momo versus Saki Kashima, two and a half stars. Nothing really special, was just sort of there. They went through their motions, they did their stuff, and Momo beat Saki. Saya Kamatani versus Ruaka. Uh, three stars. This was actually a surprisingly good match. I thought it would be quite um, lower than this. But it was actually decent stuff. They had good chemistry. Ruaka shined in this, and obviously Saya Kamatani won. I don't think Ruaka's won a single match yet. Um, but I kind of expected that. But yeah, good match between these two. Saya Kamatani um, and Ruaka both have huge potential in the future, so good for them. Then we had Himaka taking on Natsupoi. Now, at this point, this was match of the night. These two had good chemistry with each other, played off each other well. Three and a half stars. Very fun stuff between these two. Uh, Himaka did win, um, but it was it was a great power versus speed match. And, but at one point, Poi did do a German suplex on Himika, which was super impressive. But Poi really shined in this, and she shined in her next match that I'm going to talk about in the next show as well. So poi has been really shining recently, which is great to see. She's having some great matches. Nancy Poi is excellent. Poi. Unfortunately for Poi, she lost. Um, but Himika gave her a piggyback on the way back. Then we had the debut of Waka Sukiyama. She took on Unagi Sayaka for the future of Stardom Championship. Unagi did win the match. Um, Waka did lose in a debut match. Uh, three stars. It was a good match. A good debut for Waka. Um, she's ditched the devil gimmick. She's no longer the devil. She's transcended to the moon gimmick. She is now moon Waka. Still some of the best facial expressions in wrestling. Waka definitely has it. But this was Matt. This was a, you know, quite a good match, uh, especially for Wacker's debut. She was a bit nervous. Um, obviously, I think I saw her hand shaking on her pose and her entrance. So definitely there were nerves there, uh, as you'd expect. But she got over them quite quick, and they, she did a lot of drop kicks, a lot of drop kicks. But I mean, they weren't bad drop kicks. So at least is that. But it was a strong debut for Wacker, and she's only going to get better from here on out. And definitely her confidence grew as the match went on. And Unagi picked up the win, as you'd expect. Uh, she continues to be Stardom's assessor. Um, I hope she continues to hold the belt at least to the, towards the end of the year. Um, she has to give it up in January, I believe. January 4th, I think. Uh, because it will be past three years then. Next up was Julia taking on Mina Shirakar. Julia's last match of the month. And it only went about six minutes. But really good chemistry between these two. Uh, Julia can have a great match with anyone. And Mini Shirakawa is super great. So three and a half stars. I wish it would have went longer. 
Uh, they did tease, or they did pretty much announce that they were going to have a rematch at some point. So that will be a fun one down the line. Hopefully on a bigger show. Um, a big long match between Julie and Mina. But Mina looked good in defeat here. You know, she didn't get buried or anything. She held her own. And it was a hard fought back and forth battle. Which Julia won in the end. Really good stuff. Definitely go check this one out. Also, before the match... Um, they showed on the big screen their drawings because both of the competitors, Julie and Mina, did a drawing of each other and they are hilariously, hilariously bad. Maybe if I find a photo, I'll put them up here. So, then was Kogama taking on Starlight Kid and Kogama, who has been very underrated um, in my eyes, she's really showing herself in this Grand Prix. And she had another great match here against Starlight Kid. These two had good chemistry with each other. Good high speed match. And Kogma beat Kitta, which means which means Kogma is owed a high speed title match against Starlight Kid at some point in the future. After the Grand Prix. It was then announced that Hazuki would be having her return match on October 9th. Uh, Osaka Joe Hall against Kogama. So that's going to be a big match. And a, that should that could be a, a terrific match if they're given the time to perform. But yeah, Kogama Kito, definitely check this match out. A great high speed match between these two. The Cone main event was Suri taking on Konami. Um, a nice... Uh, how do I say it? It was longer than their big pay-per-view match, which I found quite disappointing when it happened. But this one went a bit longer. A good hard-hitting bout. If it's if it's really your style, you'll love it more than I did. But, you know, I gave it three and a half stars. It was very good. Konami won, surprisingly. Uh, she got a roll-up like she did with uh, Takumi Roha. So, big win for Konami here. So, she continues her momentum. And yeah, really good match and surprising victory. Then the main event of this show was Tam Nakano taking on Takumi Aroha. Terrific match. Match of the night and a best match on these two shows. Four stars. If you have to check out one match, only one match, definitely check out this one. Tam is absolutely terrific in the ring. And this is the best Takumi Aroha match in the Grand Prix so far. A terrific match with great chemistry and great intensity. To, and Tam Nakano gave a great babyface performance here. Uh, she's a great storyteller. And a great... Uh, she's great at bringing emotion to a match. And making it feel like something big. So she's a great big match player. Is Tam. And she delivered here yet again with Takumi. In I believe this is their first match ever. Uh, which... If it is, that's terrific how they had just had the natural chemistry to have such a great match. Then we go on to the 11th of September. The five-star show on the 11th of September for Stardom. So Natsupoi got a bye against Julia as Julia's injured. And instead she took on Rina. In a surprisingly good match, I gave it three and a quarter. These two had great chemistry, had a super fast-paced, fun Short, like six minute match, and it was a ton of fun. Rena, Rena held her own in there with Poi, and Poi shown once again. But yeah, if you think about just skipping it because you think it'll be a two star match, I would actually recommend giving it a shot. It was actually surprisingly a lot of fun. This match, Kogma, then obviously Poi won. Kogma then beat Lady C. Obviously, Lady C is not allowed to win a match, apparently. In a fine, fine match, two and three quarters, uh, nothing terrific. I think Lady C had some sort of bear spray or chain or something, um, or key. I, or I don't know what she had, but Kogma then took it and gave it to someone in the crowd. That was about the most interesting thing in this match, but it was just your standard run-of-the-mill Kogma, Lady C, what you'd expect them to do. But Lady C had kept the... Uh, Two new moves, the chop and the head to the knee sort of thing. So it's good to see she's keeping those moves. 
Then we had Tam Nakano versus Waka Tsukiyama. Uh, three and a quarter. I thought this was a really good match between these two. Great emotion and a really funny moment with Tam getting Waka in a camel clutch. Asking, I believe asking her who her idol was. And Kuz, Ko, Kauzen? Cousin? Kauzen? Sorry, Ko, Kozuin, I think. Kozen is Cosmic Angels. And so she went, Ko, Ko, Konami. <laughs> Which did not please Tam that Konami was her idol rather than Tam. So Waka got beaten up a lot for that. But Waka did get some, some offense in and she looked good in defeat. And again, growing in confidence. And that's what her and Maya are doing. Growing in confidence as they go along. And of course, Waka had her great facial expressions in this one as well, which she's going to bring to every match and make every match entertaining through that. While the wrestling skills progress and come in time. Then we had Mai Sakurai taking on Shuri. And it was not as one side as you think. Shuri did win and did have most of the offense. But Mai got a decent amount in. She didn't look like a complete, you know, loser. She got some offense in and looked good in defeat to Suri in a three-star match. Decent stuff. You knew who was going to win, though. And, but, again, growth. We then had the cringe fest as Fukugun took on Mayu Iwatani. Yeah, this just didn't, didn't do it for me. Um... Fukugan won because for some reason she needs to have more points. The fact that she has, I think she has no four points is ridiculous. But she won by DQ because the ref, she hit a chair into the ropes and then the chair hit her and then the ref got up and, who was knocked down, got up and thought Mayu would hit her with it. So the finish is okay but the match was cringy. Again, I don't like the Fukugan character. But then we had a good match. Utami took on Azumi, three and a half stars. Um, the only disappointment was it only went nine minutes. I think you could have added another three or four minutes into it, and it would have been a terrific match. Uh, great chemistry between between these two. Azumi hit a nice springboard maneuver at, at one point in the match, and that's the thing about Azumi. Azumi is a terrific performer in the ring. I just think she needs to show a little bit more personality, a bit more of her personality to really make that step up to be. Like a top star. But she's only, what, 18, 19 years old? So she's still got time to show that. So it in hopefully her personality and her outgoingness on the screen will grow in time. And she'll become a more well-rounded performer. Because she's already got pretty much the wrestling down pat. Basically the opposite of Waka. You know, Waka has all the personality and is building the wrestling skills. And Azumi's doing the opposite. We then had a great match between Takumi Aroha and Sai Kamatani, uh, which ended in a draw after a double countout. Three and three quarters, a uh, terrific match. Sai Kamatani, what a young natural talent she is. She also hit a nice springboard to the outside this time, uh, her springboard crossbody that she does. But again, natural chemistry, which is becoming a theme with Takumi Aroha. Sai Kamatani hit a reverse Rana as well in this. Uh, which looked cool, but a, you know, a very, very fun match. And again, it went about 13 minutes. So I think even if they, I think if they got a couple more minutes and had a, a bigger match with an actual finish, they could have an absolute classic. Then we main evented with Momo and Himika. Himika beat Momo in a good match I guess it was it, you know it didn't really capture my attention that much I gave it three and a quarter Himika won um, but again yeah solid match um, good stuff now let's move on to Monday Night Raw review let's get the downs out of the way first Eva Marie and Dewdrop don't really care Dewdrop won which is good but um, yeah don't really care about this one to be honest and Tamina versus Nikki Ash. Wasn't a bad match, but it wasn't a great fun match to watch either. Uh, it was a bit bit sloppy at times and just not, not particularly interesting. The okay stuff was the opening segment with uh, RK Bro 
Lashley MVP and Big E, who announced that he was cashing in before the show, which if you... I think they've done that multiple times before, but they've just like never cashed in and they just never bring it up again. But um, Big E was there for the opening segment, taunting both of them as Lashley and Orton got ready for their title match later the night. It was meant to be Extreme Rules, but it, instead it was moved to Raw. But fine opening segment uh, was nothing really hugely notable, uh, but it was sort of it was fine to watch. Never okay thing was Shayna Baszler versus Charlotte because it was just a solid match, but nothing entirely memorable. And finally, the twenty four seven stuff was sort of a filler thing this week again. Um, it was cool seeing you know Reggie doing some parkour, but it was only like thirty seconds. So I think um, it was a filler one this week. The ups, though, there was quite a lot of ups, actually, because uh, I thought this was a great episode of Raw. Uh, I did give it an 8 out of 10. Um, Alexa Bliss and Charlotte stuff. So Alexa Bliss came out and had the most interesting women's segment in a while on Raw and gave Charlotte her own doll called Charlie, which Charlotte was none too pleased about. But Alexa Bliss felt like a felt like a big deal here, as Charlotte kind of dismissed her and then like, dismissed the doll, and then Alexa Bliss attacked Charlotte and got the better of her. There was an eight-man tag uh, with New Day and Mansoor and Ali taking on Mason T-Bar and AJ Styles and Omos. A really fun match, a surprisingly fun match. I thought it was just me a skippable match, but it was like a super fun. Uh, short, great eight-man tag. Really entertaining match. And Omos was perfect in it. Because he was booked how he needs to be booked. And he's not doing a whole lot. But he's doing like big power moves to a lot of people. And it's you know that's fun to see people get thrown around like ragdolls. And that's what Omos can do. But he looked really good here. And of course Omos won the match. But and Ali selling as well, top notch. But a lot of fun. Then we had Natalia versus Rhea Ripley in a I think a three and a half star match. Give Natalia ten minutes in a singles match. She to me is weighing her down. Natalia on her own is a terrific performer, and her and Rhea had a really good match. I was looking forward to it going in, even though I've not been hugely invested in the storyline. Or lack thereof. But Rhea and Natal had terrific performance. And had a had a very good match. I can't give it anything amazing. Because there's no really huge story to it. But it, it was a very good solid technical match between these two. Damien Priest and Jeff Hardy had a, a solid match in the US Open Challenge. Damien Priest won as he should have. And Jeff looked, Jeff looked good in this match. And they had a solid match. The crowd was hugely behind Jeff. Um, but again... Glad he did not win because Priest should not be losing the title so soon. And then Sheamus was on commentary continuing the build to Priest and Sheamus at Extreme Rules. Karrion Cross got a backstage promo uh, which was great for him. Hopefully gets more of the casual viewers who aren't really familiar with him in NXT. A uh, bit more of a vibe on what he's about. And the destruction that he's going to bring to Monday, Nor Monday Night Raw. And a solid promo. And hopefully uh, gets him some fans and some heat and continues his progress on Monday Night Raw. Because I absolutely love Karen Cross. And finally the big stuff. The main event for the WWE Championship as Bobby Lashley defended his title against Randy Orton successfully. Really good match between these two. Crowd was super hot for it and that's what made the match great. Because in actuality the match was like... A three-star match. But the crowd was super red hot for Randy. And then when Lashley won. You could hear the deflation. Everyone was sad. Like, And then Lashley beat up Riddle after the match. And put Orton through a table. Or maybe it was Riddle through a table. He put one of them through a table. And then sort of tweaked his knee. Was the thing. That is he tweaked his knee after doing that. And then Big E's music hit. Big E comes running down. Cashes in money in the bank. And... Everything after this point was absolute perfection. 
Biggie went for the, you know, hit the leg down. I think he's going to win. Big ending. Gets out. Spear from Lashley. And you could hear the crowd like, oh no. One, two. Kick out from Big E. Then he gets tries to get the hurt lock. Doesn't work. Uh, sort of dominator. Doesn't work. Then Big E. With a big ending. One, two, three. Your new WWE champion. Big E. What a huge moment. So 2019. Kofi Kingston WWE champion. 2021. Big E WWE champion. Which can only mean one thing. 2023. Xavier Woods. WWE champion. You heard it here first. But a huge moment for Big E. Can't think of a better guy to get it. Terrific moment. Everyone loved it. And hopefully here's to a long and successful reign as WWE champion for Big E. But yeah. A solid episode of Raw. A great episode of Raw. Really enjoyed my time with this episode. A couple of NXT notes. Uh, from NXT UK and Mainline NXT, NXT 2.0 as it's being called now. Um, well, next week, or well, tomorrow, we've got Pretty Deadly versus Gallus for the NXT UK Tag Team Championships, and they better not take the titles of Pretty Deadly. I swear down. Pretty Deadly need to hold those titles forever. Yes, boy! And the only other note on NXT UK I had this week, because it wasn't a great episode because half the show was... Ilya versus Walter commentary, which we've already seen the match. So, yeah. it's a great match, but I don't really want to see it again. I want new content. So, it was a filler episode. But Sam Gradwell is hilarious. That's the only note I had. Huh? Get on that, you yogurt! The NXT 2.0, I saw the set. I haven't watched the show. I'm going to watch it tonight. But the set looks amazing. I absolutely love it. And the whole new arena and everything... Looks really good. Much improved from the CWC. So I'm looking forward to that. And looking at that. Now on to Smackdown. Couple of notes on Smackdown. Brock Lesnar. Made an appearance in Madison Square Garden. Interrupting Roman Reigns. Great interactions with Roman Brock and Paul Heyman. As Brock asked Paul... You know, why didn't you tell Roman I was going to be at SummerSlam? That caused huge tension between Roman and Heyman. It was resolved later in the night between them. They seem to be kind of on the same page. We'll see as weeks progress with Brock and this storyline. But really good opening segment. And then Paul was left in the ring with Brock. After Roman walked out on Paul Heyman. And Brock challenged Roman to a match and told Paul, you know, before you get fired by Roman, make the match, me and Roman. And then he went to F5, Heyman. Roman came in with a Superman punch. Then Brock got Roman up for the F5 and then super kicks from the Usos. But then Brock took down the Usos and took him to Suplex City. Great opening segment on SmackDown. Terrific stuff. Brock Lesnar is such a big fight feel. Big deal. He's a big deal. And everything is like a, a big fight feel with him. And later in the night we had um, Street Profits taking the Usos in a three and a half star. Really fun tag match. The Uso, sorry, the Profits won via disqualification after Roman Reigns interfered. As the Usos looked like they were going to lose. And then we saw the return of Demon Bella. Huge return. He looked awesome. It was an epic moment. And it means we're getting Roman versus the Demon at Extreme Rules confirmed. Final note on MSG Smackdown is we had a terrific, terrific match between Edge and Seth Rollins. Edge is one of the best storytellers and facial expression artists in the world. Four stars and a quarter. Not quite as good as their Summer Slam, Summer Slam match, but damn close. With an absolutely terrific ending with... Rollins hitting the super kicks straight and you know at Edge, but Edge keeps getting back up, but he knows it's over. You can see it in his face; he knows it's over. And Rollins hit the stomp. One, two, three. Edge stretched out, but this was a terrific back and forth match, and one that I cannot do justice. Go and check this match out if you haven't. 
And we have some Wrestle Princess 2 news finally. There's been more matches added to the card. Two matches specifically. Um, Hikari No will defend her International Princess title against Yuki Aino. <sighs> I and new Bishiki Gun will take on Majirabi for the tag titles. And my hype for Wrestle Princess went from 10 to 1. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not interested in either of those matches and I'll probably be skipping them because to me new Bishiki Gun versus Majirabi is going to be a cringe fest and then but at least Majirabi have personalities and then Yuki Aino to me just doesn't her personality doesn't show on screen and I'm really not invested in any of her matches and her facing Hikari does not feel like a big match at all and so those two matches very underwhelming for me um, I would have preferred me you and Ito just go two hours to be honest but uh, it's very much shaping up to be a one match show with me you and Ito and I can already tell you it's not going to be as half as good as the first Wrestle Princess so that's kind of killed my hype for it but hopefully the Stardom show which I believe is the same day will pick up and be the main attraction and be huge and great and pick up the enjoyment of the day because Wrestle Princess is not looking like it will be a great show for me at least couple of other notes is that the draft is returning on October 1st and October 4th thank goodness straight after Extreme Rules fair, fair amount of time to do it um, definitely needs to be done things need to be shook up on the main roster and switched around give us fresh new exciting matches for the next year another match I watched was Yuna Manase taking on Saki Akai in a three and a three quarters match. Great match between these two. Yuna Manase is so cool. Her entrance is amazing. She's got so much charisma. And brings so much emotion to a match. And. She's terrific at playing like. A, she's a valiant baby face. And like a sort of underdog. Fighting even though she's like big and powerful. She can still. She's still like is an underdog. And she was a valiant babe face and underdog against the taller Saki Akai. But these two had a great match. Unfortunately, Unisan lost. But as she said, it's not the... The winning doesn't matter. It's the fact that you want to win is what matters. She's always putting inspirational tweets on, on Twitter. Is Unisan. And she's such an inspiration to many. And... Hopefully they have a rematch down the line and hopefully the result will be different. But Unisan is an absolute gem of a person. Can't say enough good things about the Purple Heart. to some questions from Kiwi the GOAT who should beat Roman for the title why well, should be Demon Balor I mean it's got to be Demon Balor unless there's going to be some sort of distraction that costs him or Brock costs him or something maybe we'll see Brock and Demon I don't know but if it's not going to be Balor then you've got the draft why can't it be Drew McIntyre or Karrion Cross? That would be a terrific match. But I think the more likelihood option is it will be Demon Valor. 
most underrated wrestling promotion currently? Um, NXT UK, hugely underrated. I know this week was a filler show, but most weeks, I mean, most of my favourite matches this year have come from NXT UK. Just absolute banger after banger, and they have great, it's just an easy show to watch. It's only like an hour long. Great video segments. There's funny moments. Big characters. And terrific matches. What more could you want? Kaori. Prediction about stardom finalists in the Grand Prix. And the winner. I'm not sure who's going to win to be honest. Or who's going to be in the final. I'm going to say Himika's going to win. Part of me thinks Himika's going to win. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Screw it. Going to go with Himika's win. And she'll be in the final with... Oof. Can't remember who's in the other block. Maybe... Shiri? Maybe, maybe Shiri. Himika versus Shiri is my prediction for the final. With Himika winning. I don't want to see Suri win and face Itami again. I really don't want to see that again. We've never already had 60 minutes of matches. I don't want to see another 60 minute match. Been there, done that, give it some rest. Final question from Sammy. What are your favourite matches of the 5 stars so far? And who are the wrestlers who took your attention the most? So I mentioned earlier, I'm going to say the second part first to answer that first. Uh, Koguma has really shown to me and shown that she's an underrated talent. And also two other people, three other people, Natsupoi has really shown recently. I forgot the second person I was going to say. I had him lined up and I can... Sai Kamatani, that's it. Zoom, zoom. And finally, Unagi. Unagi's shown as well. But my top, so these are my top five. In fifth, Julia versus Starlight Kid had a great match. In fourth, Takumi Aroha versus Tam. In third, Suri versus Izumi. In second, Suri versus Sai Kamatani. And the best match of the tournament so far for me is Julia versus Kagama. If you have not seen that match, go check it out on Stardom World. Terrific stuff. So that's all we have time for on this episode. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Take care. Arrivederci. Matane. Matane.